Hi, um, I'm Sandy O'Sullivan. I'm a professor in Indigenous Studies and I'm a 2020 to 2025 um, ARC Future Fellow. So um, I've made a longer video, uh, which you can have a look at that's got more detail in it, but I'm just going to cover off on a few things. I'm sorry I can't be there today. Um, so I'm over in Department of Indigenous Studies now, um, and my program is part of the uh, Centre for Global Indigenous Futures. But I started um, and applied while I was at University of the Sunshine Coast. So I moved my um, fellowship over from there to Macquarie at the end of 2020. I'd started a month before, bad timing. Um, and it was great in terms of the move. Macquarie research area was fantastic. Uh, the application process started back in 2019. I applied the first time, got knocked back, um, applied again in 2020 and got it. When I applied and got the reviews in 2019, I responded to them. There were a few comments, pretty high scores, but it didn't get up in the end. When I applied again, I didn't change a lot about it, to be honest. Um, the project's called Saving Lives, Mapping the Influence of Indigenous LGBTIQ plus creative artists. Um, I changed some of the wording in the national interest statement to make it a little clearer, but I also removed the word queer because I assessed that the um, federal government at the time was pretty conservative and had a problem with the word queer, even though I was locating it in queer studies. I still wrote that into the application. It still exists there. And again, I've got some more information on that in the long form. Um, what I did do in putting in this application is that I approached it much the same way as I've approached other successful funding that I've had from the ARC. And that's being really straightforward about the process of engagement with community. In my case, I work with Indigenous queer community. Um, I'm an Aboriginal person, Wiradjuri person, and I situate my own work um, in my own um, uh, place in the community as a, uh, as a queer Indigenous person, as a trans person. And, uh, and so it was important to do that, but also to connect it back to the work uh, and connect it back to the two things that we know the ARC are particularly focused on at the moment, which from our perspective as Indigenous people is incredibly important, which is impact and engagement. So what engagement we are going to do in this uh, large program uh, that the Future Fellowship allows was really about what the community itself needed. And that's really hard to manage before you put it in an application. So a lot of it was based on existing work that I'd done. I'd gotten um, funding to do a fairly large museums project. Parts of that found their way into this project because of the issue of representation. And I was able to demonstrate need um, for it. And so that was the basis on which the work was um, pitched. But issues like outputs and so on had to be a little vaguer just because it would depend on what the community needed at the time that we were talking to them. Um, the program itself, Future Fellowship Program, it's a, I've got a level three Future Fellowship. I was an associate professor at the time that I applied for the funding, um, sort of on, on track to be a professor and then obviously came to Macquarie at, at professorial level. And uh, although mid-career um, researcher, I have been an academic for 32 years, <laughs> so I was still within the scope of PhD completion, which is what they base it on. Um, and I'm obviously in my late 50s, but I'm still considered a mid-career in relation to that. But like a lot of people who are successful in getting the um, applications, the, the, the grants that are connected to periods of time, you're more likely to be successful when you've, when you've had, um, uh, when you have more runs on the board. I've had over 50 million in, um, in ARC, NHMRC and um, government funding over the years because I used to run a research centre. I also know how to write a funding application because I used to run a research centre. And so um, I used some of those skills, but I also worked with the research area um, 
both at USC when I was applying for it and here in reshaping um, the project. So um, I cover off on it in the other video, but the importance of understanding a field of research codes is there's nothing that's more crucial. It's who's going to assess. Um, and it's, you know, I do strongly recommend that if you've got someone you really don't want to assess that you um, make a case for that as well. Um, the only other thing I'd say is um, it's incredibly important that we all recognise that there are um, people who have strengths in some areas uh, over others and, and in particular, um, you know, my strengths were being able to respond to not getting an application and putting it back in again, but also talking to people who were skilled in the areas that I really needed to um, improve in and recognising that, uh, you know, I think we're all part of the same community and it's important that we uh, connect up with one another and that we find a way to make sure that the work is meaningful and that the research is meaningful. Um, I think when it comes to impact, it's important to map how you intend to uh, uh, evaluate that impact, but it's really hard to clearly state it. So it would still be very, um, not so much vague, but, but really to leave it open to the outcomes that you can't possibly know yet. So I would be clear about um, about your evaluation mode, but I would not be clear about what you expect to come out of that. And I think that's quite fraught. Um, and an example is the number one thing that has been the most primary um, and important outcome for us of this project that's called Saving Lives has been the amount of parents who've come up to us who've told us that the work that we've been doing has saved the lives of their kids. Um, now, <laughs> it's an evaluation that I wouldn't have guessed at at the beginning of it, but it's something that's really important to include when we, you know, when we come to, to doing these final reports and in the dissemination of our research. So it's, while it's important to have a model of evaluation, it's really important not to over pitch it um, that's it, except to get in touch, please, if you're applying for something and you need to, uh, to uh, have a conversation, I'd be happy to have one. Thanks.